Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX Binary and ETX Forex and CFD. And welcome to our class, or the beginnings of our four-week class on understanding technical analysis. Now, tonight's class is introduction to technical analysis, but it is part of our continuing series throughout the month of May. <clears throat> Next week, we will be looking at charts and graphs. From there, we're going to move on to uh, in-depth class on the trend is your friend. The week after that, we're going to go into support and resistance. And then finally, we're going to go on to indicators and oscillators that you can use to build your trading strategy. Because in one hour, I couldn't teach you everything about technical analysis, so we'll quickly go over each of the parts and what it's all about. And then each week, we'll go in in-depth detail so that you have a very good understanding and you can take it from there or take our other types of courses that like Bollinger Bands and, and um, leverage and margin classes. And that way you'll understand how to trade. But technical analysis, the basics of te technical analysis is the crux, the bare bones that you can do as a trader. Because every trader needs to understand how to use technical analysis. Because you could use other types of analysis to be completely right, but you need to know where to put your stop losses, where to put your take profit points, what point to exit and exit a mark, exit and enter a market. Because yes, you can use a news event or other details to decide whether an asset should be traded, but you need things to help you pinpoint prices. Now, because ETX is a regulated provider, I'm required to give you a risk warning. So let's get that out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors and do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Now, those of you that are joining us through the Internet tonight, ETX is a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, and we are a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. So you know you're trading with a well-known, reliable, reputable company. Now, when you trade with ETX, you can trade on our ETX binary platform, you can trade on our web trader, and you can trade spread betting if you're in the UK, CFDs, elsewhere, Forex and commodities, or you can use the MT4 platform. We offer all types of platforms and trades, all within our ETX family. Now, again, tonight we're going to be discussing technical analysis. But this is just an introduction because over the next few weeks, we will be discussing each part in depth. Now, many of us trade from what's called fundamental analysis. Now, fundamental analysis is using things like earnings reports, economic data, the economics calendar, using political situations, geopolitical situations, using war, using risk sentiment, using speeches, headlines, news events. All of this is called, fits under the family of fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis, a lot of times, is, is easier for many people to trade with because we already kind of understand this stuff. We understand when OPEC says something about the crude oil production. We understand when there's global stripe that gold's going to go up. You know, we, we know these kind of things and we read the headlines and we can kind of understand these things. And fundamental analysis, in many cases, can help you trade successfully or predict the way an asset will move successfully. You know, if Apple comes out and says they missed their earnings report, you expect Apple to, to, to fall. But the question is, how would you determine what point you would want to exit, enter the marketplace? How far do you think Apple will fall if it falls? What points as it's declining should it stop and breathe at? What points are going to, what price points will be important as it goes down? And most of all, at what point would you want to exit the market? And because risk is the most important thing you can deal with at all times. How would you know where to put your stop loss? Okay. How would you understand what the volatility would bring and what the swing of the marketplace would be? 
because too many traders get it right but lose their money. Why? Because they get stopped out, meaning they can't afford to make the trade because they can't afford the swing in the marketplace. They put their stop loss too close, and even though the asset eventually moved the way that they were predicting or they had analyzed, they got stopped out. Or they panicked when the asset was dripping, going against them and closed their position. All of this can be resolved using technical analysis. Now, understanding how the markets are learning. Get it, learning to get the most out of the market using technical analysis will help you trade successfully. Do not look for certainty when trading the market. Simply seek the best opportunities because there's nothing out there that's guaranteed. Now, technical analysis is a study of market action primarily through the use of charts for the purpose of forecasting future price trends. In its purest form, technical analysis considers only the actual price behavior of the market and the instrument. So in other words, there's very little technical analysis that is not done on a chart. Now, yes, black boxes and robots trade using technical analysis, but they technically do it from charts. They're constantly doing these mathematical calculations and they can see things and realize things a lot faster than what we, we do. But these indicators and oscillators that they're using for this black box of this robotic trading are basically on charts. Okay. Now, granted, a, a computer doesn't have to see, put it on a chart to see it because it can do all of these calculations. We have to put those calculations on a chart so we can visually see them to make the comparison. But almost everything in technical analysis is based on the study and use of price action on a chart or an overlay on a chart or put underneath the chart to use it in conjunction with a chart. Okay, so that's why coming to our class on basic charts is vitally important because too many people, they get stuck on Japanese candlesticks or they get stuck on bar charts. They don't understand though what the differences are. They don't understand how to use them correctly. They sometimes don't even understand what a time frame is. What's the difference between a 15 minute chart and a 30 minute chart? What charts they should be using? So coming to a class on basic charts and graphs will get you started in building your a good solid foundation. Because technical analysis is based on three assumptions for this whole big scientific area of technical analysis it sounds like this big term that you know you'd use in a scientific lab it's based on three assumptions one that history tends to repeat itself two that prices move in trends and three that the market discounts everything now the track is the market does move in trends there's short-term trends long-term trends and medium-term trends but price does move in trends and when you've been in the market long enough you're going to keep hearing to say the trend is your friend because you should never trade against the trend. You should always trade with the trend. And we'll learn all about that in a class after charts and graphs called the trend is your friend. Because even though you can trade against the trend and you will, could make very good trades, ultimately, statistically, you will make more pips on the trades you make with the trend than against the trend. So ultimately, you would have been more successful trading with the trend. Now, technical analysis is widely used among traders and financial professionals. And some say it, say, it, say it use, uses more widespread than fundamental analysis in the marketplace. Technical analysis is a methodology that makes buy and sell decisions using market statistics. It primarily involves studying charts showing the trading history of statistics of whatever security is being analyzed. To perform technical analysis, Investors start with charts that show the price and trading volume history of a particular security or index, as well as a host of other things like moving averages, maximum minimums, and percent changes. The idea is to use charts to identify trends and changes in trends. There are several kinds of trends and patterns, some with unusual names like rectangles, triangles, Bollinger Bands, inverted head and shoulders, candlesticks, MACD, histograms, stochastics, and so forth. Some technical analysis use 
indicators and oscillators to interpret trading data. The question is, where do you start? And this is what we're going to try over the next four weeks is to get you where to start. Because again, it's like building a roadmap or a foundation to a house. You need to start somewhere and there are critical things that must be added. Yes, how many square feet you're going to make the house and where you're going to put the bathroom and what color you're going to put the walls and you know how many cabinets you're going to have in the kitchen. They're all secondary stuff. You need to know the foundation. You need to know where you're going to put the plumbing. You need to know how the electrical is going to run. You need to know where the storage is. You need to know what all the permits you have to get. You need to know the basics. The cosmetics are secondary. But once you have the basics, then you can start making it more complex. So it, you need to learn the basics to build your roadmaps to success. Okay. And this starts with a chart. Now, unlike fundamental analysis, which focuses on finding security's true value by studying financial statements, market outlooks, competition, macroeconomic events, technical analysis is based on the belief that past market trends can predict the future behavior of the market as a whole and for individual stocks. If an investor can correctly interpret a chart's message and predict the security's movements, he or she can obviously make a lot of money. Certain aspects of technical analysis are controversial, such as the belief that markets move in trends that can play out over a long period of time and the contention that the contention that market action can detect shifts in supply and demand relationships. The fact is, the basics of this whole broad field of technical analysis is really, first, understanding the market psychology where traders are moving and what prices will be interested or interesting to tra other traders as price moves. Because if you can start to put together price points that an asset will touch that should show a reaction, that the market should react to, you can then be one step ahead. So if the euro is trading at say 109.50, and you know 109.66 is a critical support point or resistance point. Okay? And maybe you have your Fibonacci levels and it's a retracement level. It's also the point of a, a, you know, an Elliott wave pattern. So you've now determined 109.66 is a critical point to the markets. Not to you as a personal trader because you don't want secrets. You're not trying to outsmart the markets. This you do with a strategy. Okay. First, you have to be able to read and interpret the market. And if you see the euro moving from 109.50 coming towards 109.66, where you've done all your calculations and you've determined that that number, based on support and resistance and based on trend lines and based on a couple, it should be very important to the marketplace. Now, there's no guarantee to you that the market's going to go above it or below it. But you can expect some type of reaction there. Now, if you've done this correctly, and you have the same trend lines, the same support and resistance lines, and the same base, the same chart setup as a million other traders, they're all looking at the same price you're looking at. So you're all sitting back waiting for this price move at 109.66. You don't want to be smarter than them. You want to see how they react to that price. Where if, if you not follow the rules, not done this correctly, tried to be customized now smart everything, you've come up that 109.62 is the important level. And what happens is the market shows no reaction at 109.62 because they're all waiting for 109.66. Or you decide 109.68 is important, and at 109.66 the market reacts and you're still waiting for it to get to your personal level. But the fact is, you need to draw a trend line, support and resistance lines, and have all the information based on the rules and the guides as everybody else does. Now, technical analysis believes that investors in mass, in mass display much of the same behavior as investors that preceded them. Everyone wants to buy be in on the next Microsoft. If the stock ever gets to $50 again, I will buy it. 
The company's technology will revolutionize the industry. Therefore, the stock, all of us want to get in on it. Everybody wants to be part of it. To a technical analysis, a technical analyst, the human characteristic of the market might be irrational, but nonetheless, they exist. Because investors' attitudes often repeat, investors' action in the marketplace often repeats as well. Therefore, we can see repetitive patterns in price movement. Not necessarily repetitive prices, but a repetitive pattern. When we see a particular pattern, like a head and shoulders developing, we can then predict how the market sentiment will continue to move. If we see specific support and resistance levels, we can then predict how price movement will continue to go on. Because we can understand the market psychology. Now, one of the rules of or one of the assumptions of technical analysis is that the market tends to repeat itself, or history tends to repeat itself, and the market discounts everything. Now, if you're a technical analyst, and the basic, a real hardcore technical anal an analyst, excuse me, doesn't want to look at economic events, doesn't want to look at the news headlines, they want to trade from all of these indicators and price movements on charts because they firmly believe that everything and anything that could happen to an asset is already reflected in the price of that asset. Well, that isn't such a bad statement if you're looking to invest for longer term investments. When you're like us and we're trading in the markets, which is a lot more short term and price points become more critical, and stop losses and take profit points are more important, and the risk is a lot higher, we have to be more specific. The reason being is if we say the euro is going to go from 109.50 to 109.66, and if it breaks 109.66, it'll go to 109.80. So therefore, if it breaks that 109.66, we're going to go and enter a buy, and we're going to take our profit at 109.80, and we would have picked up 24 pips. Correct. Not a bad day's worth of work. Now, it sounds pretty simple. But if you ignored the fundamental part of it all, Mario Draghi opens his mouth in the middle of the day to say something ridiculous. And what happens, the euro drops from 109.64 or 109.68 when you, you open your trade at 109.66 and drops all the way down to 109.25. You not only got stopped out, you lost your shirt. Now, the fact is, Three hours after the market passed what Draghi had to say, because it wasn't really critically important, but it caused market volatility, the euro went up to 109.82, 84. You would have made your money and been happy. But because you were ignoring the fundamental analysis that there was a speech scheduled, you overlooked the volatility that that speech could create. So those of us who are trading the markets want to be a combination or balance between technical analysis and fundamental analysis. But it's important to understand that the realm of technical analysis is not limited to just charting. Technical analysis is always primarily concerned with price trends. Anything that can influence the price trend is of interest to a technical analyst. As an example, many technical analysts monitor surveys of investor enthusiasm. These surveys attempt to gauge the general attitude of investment community to determine whether bearers are bearish or bullish. Technical analysts use these surveys to help determine whether a trend will reverse or whether the trend will develop. So these surveys are not necessarily put on charts. Neither are you know, economic data like PMI or inflation reports or anything else. But a good trader who's a trader, not an investor, will be more key to, especially a small-time investor. You know, if you're J.P. Morgan Chase, and you don't care because you don't, you know, you're not using leverage, and you can cover the swing of the market, and you don't, you know, you're not going to get stopped out. You don't care that Draghi said something because you just care that that euro hit the 109.82 and you made your profit. You knew that even if it fell down for some reason during the day, that it would come back to where it was. You and I can't afford that $8,000 or $10,000 loss. Or because we didn't realize that Draghi was speaking, we put our stop loss too close 
even though it was in, we could cover the volatility, we didn't realize there was going to be volatility. Okay. Now, whether technical analysis is really useful is a matter of dispute on Wall Street. Some investors believe it is important and possible to forecast the market's ups and downs. Academic studies have shown that when most people, professionals, amateurs alike, try to move money in and out of stocks to beat market fluctuations, they tend to wind up with losses. Some academic studies say technical analysis has little predictive power, but other studies say it may produce excess returns. Now, the fact is, some people rely on this for exit and entry points. They rely on technical analysis to make all of their decisions. I firmly recommend using fundamental analysis and other tools to determine whether that asset will go up or down. Once you've determined that, then apply the technical analysis to determine at what point you want to enter the market, what point you want to exit the market, where you put, what risk you should be taking, and what the volatility should be. Okay, because this is what technical analysis can do for you very successfully. Now, we will learn how to start putting information on a chart. So next week when we learn basic charts and graphs, we're going to learn how to use a chart. Then we're going to slowly, over the next several weeks, start putting information on this chart. And this is the information we're going to put on here are going to be our foundation. This foundation will let you interpret the market, will help you. It's the bare bones, but even no matter how advanced you are in trading, being able to put a trend line, support and resistance, and seeing volume on a chart are critically important. And there's a lot of automated trading systems that use just support and resistance and trend lines that are completely automated trading systems okay. because these are very valid points. And when you're looking to make quick, short profits, a bounce off of a trend line moving back up to a support line can be a nice, simple trade if you figure it out right. Now, the first step is to identify the overall trend. This can be accomplished with trend lines, moving averages, and peaks and trough analysis. For example, the trend is up as long as the price remains above its upward sloping trend line or certain moving averages. Similarly, the trend is up as long as the higher troughs form on pullbacks and the high, and higher highs form from each advance. In other words, a trend is looking at the peaks and the valleys, the troughs and, and, the, and, the, and the peaks in price movement because price doesn't move in one straight direction. It moves up and down, up and down, or hems and haws or pushes and eases. Okay. But there are rules. And there's a good deal of these rules, and you have to understand how to apply these rules because too many people want to think they can just put a line on a chart and say, oh, I got a trend line. The question is, how do you build a trend line that has legitimacy and is correct? Okay. Then we have what we call areas of support and resistance, and these are the basic structural concepts of technical analysis. Support are areas of congestion or previous lows below the current price mark the support. A break below support can, can be considered bearish or detrimental to the overall trend. Resistance, on the other hand, are areas of congestion. So if you think of support and resistance as the floors and the ceiling in an elevator. So imagine you're the euro and you're at 109.50 and I shove you in that elevator. Now the euro's got no hands so you can't push any buttons. So you're standing there, and what's the floor below your feet? Okay. And what's the ceiling above your head? Well, we know that ceiling was at 109.66. We knew when it, you got in that elevator, you were standing on 109.40. So the floor below your feet is at 109.40. The ceiling above your head is at 109.66. When I start moving upward, I have to break through that ceiling. So that ceiling at that point is what? My resistance. But when I move above that ceiling, I broke the resistance, and that resistance now becomes my support. So 109.66, when we break through there, starts supporting you. And you don't, because you can't push the buttons, you have no control on the next floor that the elevator will stop at, but you can use predictive natures 
and technical analysis to predict what that floor would be. How? Now, imagine you have a four-story building. So you have a ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, and roof. The ground floor is lots of retail stores, coffee shops. You know, it's, a, it's an inner city. It's a, a big square block building. And, you know, there's some Starbucks. There's some takeaways. There's, you know, a, you know, a quick convenience store, a quickie mart. And there's a couple, you know, other types of stores on their first floor. The second floor is high-end offices. You know, lawyers, doctors, accountants, professionals. Third floor, the, the, uh, the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor is conference rooms that those professionals down below use. The ceiling, the roof deck, the fourth floor, is the roof, which is a smoking area. It's all a finished, beautiful roof with a sitting area, vending machines, outdoor spaces to sit and smoke, and also a place to eat lunch. Now, by analyzing each one of these floors, at the time of day, you could actually predict where that elevator might go, and you can predict it if it's on the ground floor and it starts going up, and it's, say, early, early in the morning before people have come to work, it's most likely the housekeeper who's going up and cleaning the floors. Or, no, maybe the janitor's going up on the roof to smoke. You can use that to predict. Now, at lunchtime, you can predict that every time that elevator goes from the first floor up, it's most likely going to go right to that roof, drop somebody off who's going out to smoke, and come back down to the ground level. In the evening, when most of the offices are closed, you know that elevator, if it goes up to, to floor one, it's going to come right back down because there's somebody going home. But there's going to be very few going up, but it might go up to the roof. If it went up to the first floor, then there's a good chance it can go up to the roof because probably whoever was left working late at night and wants to go up on the roof and smoke and come back to the first floor. So you can start making predictions. And this is using technical analysis or support and resistance. Now, most investors tend to be either technicians or fundamental investors. Though many analysts believe that combining technical and fundamental analysis is the best way to evaluate exit and entry points. Since many people believe, believe in technical trading rules, at the very least, the rules become sometimes self-fulfilling, making them important to know for an individual investor. So as you build your roadmap to success, we keep using more and more of this stuff called technical analysis. But when we start to try to explain it and understand it, it's not so scary as it was before we started. So, there may be lots of questions, and when you start hearing people talk about all these RSI and stochastics and MACD histograms, yeah, it gets really scary, but those are, there's a billion of them. When you start to understand what they are, and you start understanding what's a lagging indicator, what's a leading indicator, what's the difference between an oscillator, you know, what shows you, uh, what are give you entry points and exit points, what give you overbought and oversold, guess what? They all don't get so scary anymore. You get them down pat, you realize that you just have to learn them. But you don't even have to use them. What you have to use is the basics. Chart, trend line, support and resistance, and volume. Then you can add each of the other things as you would like. Okay? In our class on um, indicators and oscillators, we're going to go through a lot of these. But like I said, next week we're going to look at charts and we're also going to take some time to look at Japanese candlesticks because a lot of new traders fall into the trap of Japanese candlesticks. And candlesticks are a great trading system, but they are an elaborate, complicated system. We have a two-week course in June on just understanding the 16 patterns of Japanese candlesticks and how they're to be used. Because people see these beautiful candlesticks and the reds and the greens, and they just think when they see lots of reds, that they should be trading something to go down. They see lots of greens that they should be trading to go up. But that's a misnomer. Candlesticks are all about placement and the size of the wicks, the size of the shadows, the size of the body, and the patterns made by the groups of candlesticks. So we'll learn in next week all about line charts, bar charts, and candlestick charts. Because the more detail you add, the more likely you're not to get lost. And if we start you out on the basics, 
you'll be fine. And like I said, tonight we're talking about this. Generally, I guarantee you, none of you are confused at the moment. We've explained half this stuff away. We haven't actually used any indicator, but now you have a kind of understanding of what support and resistance are, what charts are, and how to use them without being scared. You kind of understand, you kind of know and understand the foundations. And then next week we'll look at line charts and bar charts and candlestick patterns, and we'll learn what the difference is, because the three charts you just looked at are identical assets, the same charts, the same times, and you can see that they look much different, and they give you a lot of information. And this is where your beginnings of technical analysis comes from, is looking at this chart and being able to tell a story. Now, Forex trading attracts many different types of traders with many different types of systems. If you want to trade a currency pair, it is best to become as familiar with it as possible, or any asset. The first thing I'm going to tell you before you start even doing this, because you're going to say, oh, look at this charts and graphs and all, it's going to take me so much time. I don't have the time for all that. This is complicated. I'd rather just read the headlines and make a trade. Well, the fact is, today with online trading, we are inundated with the amount of assets we can trade. And this is one of the biggest mistakes, is trading too many assets. If you become an expert at one or two assets, you'll get just as many trades, but you'll make more pips. So it's, if you want to trade a currency pair or a commodity or a stock, it's first to best to become as familiar with it as possible. So if you to limit yourself to three technology stocks or you know, I started out trading 45 years ago, and I only traded agriculturals, and I only traded orange juice, okay? I only traded consumables, okay? Only in the agricultural area. That was it, okay? And those days, the markets were a lot slower, and we had lots more time. But the fact is, today, you can't be a gold expert, a silver expert, a apple expert, a euro expert, you could trade them all because you can get the data and everything a lot faster, but you don't become an expert at it. If you spend your time dealing with one asset, the euro and all of its crosses, you can stay very busy, and you'll find eventually that your enjoyment will come from building your charts and your graphs, building and deciding what assets should be traded and when they should give you something, and you'll find that you're a lot more successful in the long run. So one of the best reasons to learn how to read a chart properly so that you can apply technical analysis. Not every trader believes in using technical analysis, but it can be useful even if it's not your primary method of trading. Technical analysis relies on the price that is on your chart you are using. But the more information you add, the more likely you are to arrive successfully. Okay. Now, look at this chart. Doesn't it look like a roadmap? I mean, it's very confusing. Now, okay, Carl just asked me, and this is a kind of a common sense question, Carl. Why did they open the markets up this much to us retail traders? Nobody opened the market. All of these things have always been traded. It's just today with computerized trading, you know, technology advances. It's not just this. You know, 20 years ago, you couldn't go online and buy anything you wanted. Today, you can go online and buy anything. Computers are what did this, not people. You know, technology. You know, back when I started trading 40 years ago, we couldn't get data. We would, I traded my own account, but we would go sit in a broker's office using his ticker tape because they weren't available to anybody else. And we would have to be looking at prices on ticker tapes. And if you weren't sitting there, you couldn't get this. And when the crop reports, were, or I'll tell you one year that we had this horrible strike in Brazil, Orange juice run through the ceiling. But the fact is, you couldn't get the news that fast. There was nobody from Brazil transporting, you know, sending the news to the U.S. What did we have those days? We had three news three times a day on the television set and three major networks. Nobody discussed financial news. With USDA crop reports came out, yeah. They came out if you were sitting in Chicago where they, you know, at the USDA office. But otherwise, it would be 24 hours before they'd reach a broker's office through a ticker tape. and when a hurricane was coming to Florida and possibly destroying the crop or the temperature dropped overnight, well, how would you find out in Los Angeles how low that temperature fell that night and did the crops actually freeze? Okay. 
Well, when we didn't have computers, we didn't even have faxes in those days, and we didn't have instantaneous news. The markets were just slower. Today, it's just like having eBay at your door. You can buy everything and anything in a matter of seconds. You're going to buy from Amazon, Alibaba, you know, all of this. I don't even shop on Alibaba because it's so confusing. There's so many products. But this is what happened, technology. But it's not so bad. It's, it's only so bad for those people who want to run after everything. What it says, I can't tell you how to trade. I can only recommend. My recommendation is to take one or two or three assets because you'll find even though today we have computerized charts and you can put everything on your charts and keep them and do everything real quickly, studying these charts and studying the assets are the key to trading. And when you spent your time doing this, you'll find that you will trade a lot more successfully because then you'll be, have time to recognize tight patterns in charts. You'll understand and be able to see a symmetrical and ascending triangles and descending triangles. And we have a whole class on chart patterns. But the fact is, yes, you don't see them very quickly. But today also, most trading systems or most charting systems, you can just click on there. There's a script and it'll show you where the triangles are developing. Because all of this can be done with you know, computerized algorithms. So now you have pattern assistance. You actually have candlestick charts that will as charts that will just simply tell you whenever a candlestick pattern's you know developing and what it is and, and explain the whole pattern to you. There is everything has become a lot easier, but it becomes a lot harder also because now you have to learn how to use all this data that's flowing out to you, and the markets move a lot faster. But you will be able to learn all of this in no time flat, and we'll have you over the next four weeks getting a good basic understanding. So we're also going to talk about chart patterns and there's lots to learn when we come there. And again, we'll go over trend lines and we'll explain to you how to use trend lines for support and resistance and how to combine these and what the rules are for trying, drawing trend lines so that you understand exactly how to draw them properly and how to apply them. Okay. And then we'll go over all the different ways of su support and resistance. Because there are many different ways to look at support images and get them from. There's a standard, what I call eyeballing, which to me is the best of them all. Okay. We'll teach you how to build no man zone around the support images. We'll teach you how to use pivot points and Fibonacci levels so that you can see the different ways of achieving support and resistance levels because they become critically important. But when you understand the concept, applying the different types, you know, I have a triple header strategy which you use three different support and resistance to come up with a trade. But that's a, a, a strategy. There's a billion strategies out there. But before you can apply a trading strategy, you have to understand what the markets are trying to tell you. Because it gets very, very confusing. And all we're trying to do is give you the understanding that you'll be able to move on. So we're going to move to trend lines, and from there we're going to move on to the next important concept, which we keep going over, support and resistance. And then we'll start looking at the different indicators and oscillators and determine and understand what leading indicators are and lagging indicators, what oscillators are, which, and which, one, which group of each give you trading signals, which give you support, which uh, not give you support, but verify the current markets, which warn you when a market's about to reverse itself, what the difference is between retracement and reversal, what's a continuation pattern, okay, and we'll go over all of that over the next four weeks so that you can have a very good grasp of how to trade in the marketplaces. So on that note, I'm going to say goodnight to you. I will see you next Wednesday, and next Wednesday get ready because then you're going to be starting with your charts. And my recommendation to you between now and next Wednesday is to pick one asset. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. Okay. Not an asset that's going to make you money. If you're going to Australia on vacation next year, take the Aussie dollar. If, you're going, if you want to buy gold because it's your gold anniversary, take gold. doesn't matter. Pick one asset. You want Apple, you want Facebook, you want Twitter, you want Snapchat. Pick one and start. we'll start together building your charts. 
in class. Then we'll go over and we'll together put the support and resistance line. And you'll become the master of that asset. Once you do that, you can then apply it to many other assets. But spend one that over the next month, you'll get to understand and know. And you'll be surprised how comfortable you will become. Okay. And it will eventually become secondhand to you. Now, most experienced traders will tell you many stories about how certain price levels tend to prevent traders from pushing the price up of an underlying asset in a certain direction. Okay. There's all kinds of stories. But once you can determine them and figure out what they will be, you'll be the smartest guy in the marketplace. So next week, like I said, we're going to look at trend lines and we're going to look at charts. We're going to look at what the different types of charts, what the time frames are, how to put volume on a chart, where you would locate the indicators and oscillators to put them on a chart, not which ones because there's hundreds of them, and how to use these chart properly, how to, you know, how to, how to, and then after that, we're going to take that same chart you start next week, and the following week, we're actually going to put the short term, the medium term, and the long term trend line on there. And then we'll go put support and resistance changes as price moves, so we can only put the support and resistance at the next Wednesday's class for that asset you're looking at. And before you know it, like I said, this will all become second nature to you. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Now on Sundays, we've reinvigorated our events calendar. So this Sunday and the Sunday, two Sundays from this, we are going to look at all the economic events, technically fundamental analysis, but all the economic events scheduled on the calendar for the next two weeks. And we'll look at those the important events and announcements. We'll analyze what they should be, what we're expecting, what assets should be affected by the decision, and get you ready so that you can start looking at those to make trading decisions ahead of time. And so we'll be looking at, on May the 8th, we'll be looking at the 8th through the 22nd, I believe it is, and then the 22nd, so we'll, we'll be coming off right after the French elections, and then we'll be, at the 22nd, we'll be going up through the UK elections on June the eighth I think it is. So join us next Sunday afternoon for the May 8th through the 22nd economic events and we'll see you next Wednesday for basic charts and graphs. So thank you very much for joining us tonight and we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night and thank you for being part of the ETX family.